Um, I, we'll wait for Curtis to come in. I know KK is not going to be here, but Curtis, he didn't tell me he wasn't going to be here, so hopefully he'll come in just a minute. But before we call the official meeting to order, I do want to introduce you to our latest and greatest addition to Clinton City Schools. So we have with us Sean Humphrey and his sweet daughter Adley today. So uh, Sean, just come, just if you want to just stand up and let them just say hello to you. He is our new supervisor of maintenance and facilities. <laughs> And so, a uh, neat story of how we came to meet Sean. Um, he actually was our superintendent for the addition at Clinton yeah. Elementary School. And so, when he came as superintendent and oversaw that project for us, um, he, uh, we, at that point, his daughter Adley was a student at North Clinton Elementary School. She has now gone on to middle school in another district. But he was very intriguing to us because he held high expectations for a Clinton Elementary addition. He wasn't scared to have hard conversations, and he knows stuff. But best <laughs> of all, he was able to tolerate Scott Ray. And so that was the final straw that I knew that if he could beat Scott Ray's expectations and get along with Scott Ray, that he certainly would love Clinton City Schools. So, um, so anyway, we um, asked him to come, and um, we are lucky to have him, but he is over seeing all three schools he's over all the facilities he's going to as he learns and kind of gets embedded he's working on building a good team for us in the schools but then he will also all capital projects and um, all RFPs with capital projects and all that thing will be turned over to him and so Scott is slowly going to begin releasing that area of his job to Sean so I wanted Seriously? you all to meet him huh? he really is he really is he really is <laughs> get ready for retirement do you see how sad he is about that? <laughs> oh, so um, he is a woodworker by nature, or, and yeah. so um, his first task is um, I have given him um, our annual retirement birdhouse, and I'm like, hey, can you make these? <laughs> so he's yeah. going to try. He's going to try to make those. But anyway, he has been a welcomed addition. People have, are already just, he just feels so much a part of Clinton C. Schools. So we won't make you stay for the lovely board meeting, but thank you for coming in and letting this board, Sean, are the most fabulous people who make decisions in the best interest of kids every day for Clinton City. So you have landed a good, a good school board to work for. So. Absolutely, I feel that way, and I Everybody, everybody at all three schools have welcomed me with open arms. I just, every, when I started, I just felt like I was a celebrity. And I think was, um, <laughs> at North, Addie went to North, so I knew some of the teachers there already and the principal. And um, every school I went to after I went to North, like, everybody's just, like, waiting on me, you know. And I feel like Monza had emailed me on the 22nd, and I started on the 27th. So it's like... She was already ahead of schedule, you know. So <laughs> I came right in to get right to work, so um, I feel right at home. So thank you. So he's going to do wonderful. He's playing catch up right now. Just, you know, we've had a lot of projects that have kind of fallen through the cracks that need lots of love and attention. So he's running himself ragged right now, but he is doing a terrific job, and we are very blessed to have you. So you. now take your daughter somewhere wonderful for dinner. Love and. <laughs> Welcome to thank you. Welcome to Clinton City Schools. All right, I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. First item up on our agenda is to approve our agenda as presented. Motion to approve. Do we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Moving on to our consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve our consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our financial report with Mr. Ray. Everybody should have the February uh, summary financial statement in their board packets. I'm just going to, at the general purpose school fund, just focus your attention on the revenue side. Uh, everything is coming in as anticipated. I expect um, property tax and sales tax to probably be a little bit uh, ahead of budget by the time we finish up the year. And that's mainly a result of our, um, av our weighted average daily attendance increase that how we divide the money among the school districts in Anderson County. 
but it won't be a, a windfall increase. It'll, it'll just be a slight increase I'm anticipating. So that's good news. Uh, expenditures are occurring as, as we budgeted and anticipated. Um, uh, the federal programs uh, budget and actual, we have approximately 45 days in accounts receivable, and I'd like to keep it at about a month. And that what that means is we spend the money, we file for reimbursement, and the federal government gives, gives us our money back. And I don't like them to hold our money for more than 30 days. It's my goal. So we're at 45, we're getting there. Um, and that's not out of the ordinary. Some school systems are three or four months in arrears. Uh, school nutrition, uh, everything's coming in as, as we've expected. Again, um, we don't have a lot of risk with our school nutrition program. If a, if a qualified meal is served, we get a reimbursement and we know the fixed cost of that meal. It's already established in contract. Um, so right, we're at about $46,000 in a surplus so far this year. I anticipate us ending in the year somewhere between fifty and 75000 so or when it's all said and done. Uh, any questions on your financial statements? All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve our February financial report as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further questions or comments for Mr. Ray? Hearing none, Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Lori Wilson? Yes. Tim Bible? Yes. Merle Frost? Yes. Joey Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to new business, uh, we have our salary schedules for 23 24 school year. Okay, attached you will find the 23 uh, 24 proposed salary schedules. Um, Scott worked really hard trying to find the, the happy spot of, of what we could do this year. And I am really pleased with the outcome of where we landed. Um, so for certified for teachers, um, we layered a $2,200 on each one of the levels. So then when you look at the uh, increase of $2,200 plus their step raise, that gives a median raise, not an average raise, but a median raise of approximately 5%. And then, so we wanted to mimic the same type of raise for our classified staff. So we've raised, um, put $1,000 um, on each level of our classified staff. So then with their $1,000 and with their step raise, that's gonna be a 5% median raise for them as well. And then for our custodial staff, I incorrectly put in your email that that was a 50 cent raise per hour. Um, Scott corrected me, that is actually a 75 cent raise per hour. Um, on that as well. So um, everything else, if you work a longer contract, is prorated with those <coughs> with um, those numbers in mind. But I bring to you um, a nice salary increase for our staff that is well deserved. All right. Any further questions or comments for Kelly? Did I hear the governor say he was going to try to provide money to raise the salary? To fifty thousand base. He, his goal is by the end of his term that is, is that all districts will have a minimum salary of $50,000. We did not get any new additional money this year for teacher salaries. Um, with the money that he invested in TISA, the announcement that he made a year ago about TISA, that money did go in, but all these raises are taken from that money. He didn't add any new money this year for teacher raises. He has said that in subsequent years that he will assist districts in meeting that 50,000 threshold. We don't know what that's gonna look like yet. That would really be nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. they earn that. Yes. And if you look, we're, we're, close. we're very close. Mm -hmm. We're at starting now at $48,636. Uh, so I would say by next, mm -hmm next year or two we'll be able to, to meet that threshold before his mandate goes into effect. Right. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the salary schedule on first and second reading as presented. So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Lori Wilson? Yes. Kim Bible? Yes. Merle Price? Yes. Joey Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to our budget for the 23-24 school year. 
And the board bag at the It's budget. in your green folder. No. Uh, Behind salary scale. It's preceded, I mean, memo is precedes the budget, and I've just summarized a few key points. Um, general purpose school fund, we've got almost an $11 million budget, um, and I'll just kind of talk about that. We increased salaries and benefits approximately 4%. Uh, it's across the board. Um, now, Kelly had mentioned the salary schedules coming in about a 5% increase. But when we add in the salaries and benefits, health insurance, dental vision, life insurance, some of the things that we offer, it comes in at about a 4% uh, additional cost to us. Um, capital project improvements, we've got budgeted some playground and security uh, improvements. We've got some capital project repairs, uh, wastewater treatment, that's uh, budgeted roofing and flooring. Uh, South Clinton addition has been completed by the, hopefully, <laughs> the flooring issue is resolved by June, but there's uh, no money in there for South Clinton Elementary School as far as the expansion. Um, increases in reincurring expenditure, salary and benefits are funded by the, the, the increase in TISA or the BP that, that we received. Um, and that's a, that increased our funding by about six and a half percent. Um, and capital project improvements and repairs are going to be covered by fund balance. We don't like to pay for recurring expenditures out of fund balance. Uh, local tax revenues. Um, we're in a funny time in the next, we're currently in it, and in the next probably five years. Um, the bifurcation of our total revenues, it runs in two lanes. Um, our local, which is driven by sales tax and property tax, I kind of predict to be flat but below inflation, which is not great. Um, the state revenues will probably keep pace with inflation for the next couple of years. What that means is we're not solely dependent on one revenue stream. So if one isn't as strong as the other, we can still maintain, because we have a fund balance, and we can still maintain our academic programs that we want to maintain. So I feel like we do that well with our general purpose school fund. Um, any questions about that budget right now? Um, federal projects, uh, same as last year. Uh, we're really in the preliminary stages. We haven't received our allocations yet. We won't even know where we stand with carryover money, meaning money we, we have been allocated but haven't spent this year that carries into next year's budget. Um, so that is um, very rough estimates. Uh, cafeteria fund, I think we're going to experience a decrease in overall participation, breakfast and lunch in general terms. Um, and and I hopefully it won't happen. But again, the way our contract reads, we have a fixed price, we're protected. Um, uh, Paramark does a good job of running that program. And the way we've structured that contract really protects us uh, from any major ups and downs. Um, but I did budget uh, probably 20% less money in cafeteria fund for revenues and expenses because I do anticipate a decrease. Um, Why do you think there's going to be a decrease? Well, a lot of uh, kiddos um, are falling off the direct cert list. Our numbers are shrinking, free and reduced. You know, right now, people are not probably feeling the ill effects of inflation. Um, but, and, it, and that always kind of runs a year behind. <laughs> Takes a year to get caught up to everybody. Once unemployment starts kicking in, which is what the Fed's trying to do to control inflation, um, we might see participation kick back up, but that will be another year or two down the road. Um, I think it's just going to be a one-year hiccup for us, but that's why I budgeted what I did. Obviously, we can change it as we see things. Um, I know I'm rarely wrong, uh, but as we see <laughs> things change, and I just see if you're paying attention. As we see things change, we can, we can go with that. Um, but I just wanted to kind of address why I did a reduction in, in revenues and expense for, for school nutrition. Any questions on the on the budget? All right. 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget for 23-24 school year on first reading. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. A motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Lori Wilson? Yes. Kim Bible? Yes. Mara Todd? Yes. Joey Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to uh, sixth grade. Uh, yes, yeah, so I brought this to your all's attention last month um, just to kind of give you some context, but I am requesting that we move our sixth grade from North Clinton Elementary School to Clinton Elementary School um, just due to our low enrollment numbers. I will tell you that Monica has done a great job of talking with the parents regarding this and we do have some students whose parents have indicated that they want to take us up on the offer to go to Clinton Elementary and so we have arranged where we will be providing a van transportation that will pick up at North Clinton, deliver to Clinton Elementary and then deliver them back. <laughs> Um, to North Clinton Elementary. And so um, I'm requesting official approval for me to do that. What it will involve is it will involve us at the central office level just submitting to the state that for next school year, North Clinton will be a pre-K through five school, not a pre-K through six school. We can revisit that and we can change that at any time the data shows us that, that it's gonna be in everybody's best interest for us to reinstate it. Do we have a number on the number of children, some children that we will be transporting? I, right now I'm thinking, I, I know one for sure and two possibly, but there are others that are choosing to go that the parents are just gonna provide. Okay. Do you have a final number? I know we had seven that were gonna stay with us. I know of three for sure that are gonna go to, to Clinton Elementary. I don't know if you have an updated number or no, not. I don't. Any further questions or comments? I was just going to say it's a good move. We can't have a classroom for five or six students. And North Clinton has a history of that. It just, you know, you, you would think the research would show the lower the class size, the better off the kids are. And that's not what the research shows. Um, there is no, there's no benefit to lower class sizes according to the majority of the research. In fact, it can be harmful in some ways when you get it that low because you're not, you don't have the socialization, you don't have the rich conversations, you don't have kids to feed off each other, you can't do peer tutoring, you just lose a lot of the rich socialization part of education. That also so, solves a problem at Clinton Elementary as well, doesn't it? Because didn't we have a need for another sixth grade teacher or we were tutoring? Correct, we were, we're, we're sitting on 24, 25 kids in each class right now at Clinton Elementary, so we were on the bubble of needing to put that fourth teacher in Clinton Elementary as well. So, and we actually, I think one of the beautiful things is we did have a parent this year that decided to go to Clinton Elementary from North Clinton and loves North Clinton Elementary with all of her heart and soul. She just wanted her child to have a better opportunity to meet a wide variety of different people before they went to the middle school. And I will say for this particular student, she has flourished and just has developed such self-confidence and she will go into the middle school stronger now just because she's gotten to experience meeting that, that wide variety and gets to go into the middle school with a solid core of a large group of friends. So I think, I think it will serve our North Clinton kids very, very well and help just kind of ease them into that middle school setting. Okay, any further questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, sixth grade from North Clinton being moved to Clinton Elementary School. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our contract with Hill Services. This is a, involves the wastewater lining for Clinton Elementary on the first floor terrazzo. Um, basically from the 
student restrooms near the office, Clinton Elementary, uh, down the hall uh, towards the gym, <laughs> and then go in, going into the basement, and underneath the gym in the basement, slab out to the street, Main Street. Um, we've already installed a manhole cover in front of the swing set at Clinton Elementary. So we're all ready. Um, they'll be digging a hole at those restrooms near the office, um, in the terrazzo, and at the stairwell uh, near the gym uh, in the terrazzo. Uh, there's a certain distance that they can do this lining, and then they need another access point. Um, so. Uh, we, we bid it out, had no responses, so we reached out to two vendors that we knew did the work, and the results are in the memo, but uh, overall, we're, uh, Hill Services um, is what we've selected. And um, there's some other quotes in there for concrete cutting. We'll actually have some electric excavation equipment in the building, and um, we have to have a plumber to work on the sewer line to cut it, and, reattach and then um, reinstall the slab so that it can be finished floor level. That's all in the memo so just uh, requesting your uh, authorization for that and then it should take five to seven weeks to complete so that's going to lock up Clinton Elementary from the gym to the cafeteria will be off limits um, at that point. Any questions? How much time does that buy you on the building till the end of the building's life? Oh, well, this line is 30 to 40 years, so we won't have to dig up the terrazzo during our tenure. Um, but they will have to dig up a piece of terrazzo for the project. Yes, two spots. Which has made me very sad, but we How have big? a plan. <clears throat> you know where the concrete is that I did? Mm -hmm. near the. Same. It's going to be probably twice that size there and, the, and another one at the down the hall where the stairwell is, right there. And we're just gonna put walk-off carpet uh, there to make that transition at this time. Um, which is good, because uh, if there's ever any areas that are wet, coming, you know, going up the stairs, that walk-off carpet would get set off the kids' feet but, uh, from outside. Um, so. Is there any way that maybe Joey can get a piece of that terrazzo floor like I got? With For a paperweight, can I, okay. we make paperweights and sell them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can get your shovel. Or, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it is, it's, it would be impossible to match what we have. And I think cost-wise, it wouldn't be worth it because I don't think they could actually do it. Um, but, um, I think that's the best thing to give us some more longevity of the building. Okay. Any further questions or comments for Mr. Ray? All right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve contract with Hill Services. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to uh, move our our excess finances, I guess, into the government investment pool. I'm going to take a stab at this, Scott, and you have my permission to interject at any time. I don't make sense, okay? Sure, it'll be perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> we were contacted, as you know, a few years ago. We put a pot of our fund balance in with the city in a high interest bearing account. And it served us well for several years. Um, in fact, we were we were making some returns that even equaled teaching assistants salaries. And um, but we were contacted recently by um, both Gail and Chris, who do um, city finances, that it was no longer making that return on investment. And they actually suggested that we look at a different a different avenue to invest that money. So that sent Scott researching. And so he basically is requesting approval from you all to take that pot of money and uh, to move it into a local government investment pool. And uh, the risk is about the same that are outlined in the memo, but it is, a, it is a low risk, but there's always some risk associated. And as he said, we're hoping to get approximately 4.5 APR um, 
in this pool or something similar. Um, what he intends to do is if you all approve for this to happen, then he will keep you all updated through his financial reports um, on the returns that we are getting to make sure that that is a good move. And um, if you, he's outlined the stress tests that they do monthly on this pool. Scott feels very, very good about it. But um, Scott, is there anything else that you would like to add? No, you did a great job. You're training me well. Training me well. I think it's a good move. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions or comments? All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve moving our uh, a portion of our fund balance into the local government investment pool. Motion second. to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Lauren Hansen? Yes. Kim Popple? Yes. Merle Todd? Yes. Joey Smith? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Moving on to reports and information. Uh, we do have the sixth grade graduations coming up. Uh, those are listed on our agenda. Uh, we also have the Summer Law Institute coming up in July. So uh, Kim will probably be reaching out to see who will be attending and uh, just let her know. Uh, we do have uh, Miss Molly Scarborough that will be doing our evaluations again this year, and so those are included in your board packet. Uh, please look over those and follow the timeline, and we'll get those to Molly as quickly as we can. And that is all of the reports and information. We'll move on to our director's report. Okay, we have several principals here to give school reports. Unfortunately, Ann Bone Steele got sick at work today. And um, so we have sent her home to get better. And I told her that as much as we love her, we did not want her germs tonight. So we have sent her home, but we'll start with Monica. Monica, if you wanna come up and give us an update on North Clinton. We've been uh, not as busy at this time of year, thank goodness, because we're preparing for testing right now. Um, so uh, I did want to mention that we had our kindergarten roundup. We had um, on the 28th of March, we had almost 19 students. I think it was somewhere between 18 and 19 students that registered for kindergarten, which for us is huge. Um, I think we had 20 that registered uh, last year, which this would allow us to maintain two kindergarten classrooms. So we're expecting to have enough to at least have two, two classrooms for next year as well. Um, so we, that's, and that's what we want. We want our, our kindergarten kids to get as many um, small class sizes as possible for, for those little hands and, and brains. Uh, on the 31st, uh, we had the spring pictures and cap and gown pictures uh, for our sixth grade students so that they would, when they receive their little uh, sixth grade diploma, then they can have their cap and gown pictures. Uh, we had some festive activities with students in kindergarten and first grade um, in RTI and intervention. They uh, went outside and did some little le um, letter name and letter sound egg hunts um, in, uh, in both the kindergarten homerooms and in intervention. We also had our fifth grade teacher, Ms. Amos, had um, received a grant from the Education Foundation uh, with some circuitry and ener energy equipment. And so they've been uh, creating circuit boards. They were able to receive some signals from radio stations, local radio stations, determine some weather conditions, and had other electrical engineering projects on the, on the list. Um, we also, in their guidance program, they presented some projects of some topics they chose to study for guidance class, kind of a preparation for just learning more about either some jobs or some other areas of interest and in being able to speak in public. Uh, then we have Ms. Cook, who's our special education teacher. Um, she received last month a donation from Sweet Will's Treats, and as he had raised some money for area special education classrooms, he was this was our his first donation. And Ms. Cook's class also ordered something a free kit, and I'm going to try the name of it because I've butchered it several times today. Uh, Quantania uh, is the group. Uh, they, uh, she ordered a kit for her special education class. They only provide this for special education. So there are lots of free lessons that she got, but the first one that they did was they had some, um, some paper that had little seeds in it and they formed it into little bitty miniature planet Earths. And so then they're gonna put them inside the actual Earth and grow the seeds into plants. So that was very sweet. Um, 
And then we have our one of our big upcoming trips. Um, and I, it says 410, I've got to have written the wrong thing. 510, uh, fifth grade is gonna go to BizTown. So that'll be happening before I see you guys next time. Thank you, Ms. Ryle, lots of fun stuff. Ms. Sharp from Clinton Elementary. I just wanna start by um, thanking everyone that reached out um, during the tragedy, as you all know, we lost a fifth grade student who was very near and dear to us. Um, and it really did impact our staff and students, but I especially wanted to thank um, Clinton Middle School. They brought over a basket immediately and they provided lunch. Uh, Robbie Desjarnet, he was there um, helping the staff. And then also on the day that we opened the school up to students, um, Pastor Chisholm and Laura Neal from First Baptist, Debbie Stewart from Second Baptist, Clinton Church of Christ brought over a basket um, as soon as um, they found out. And then the Ridge Church also provided breakfast, um, lots of support for staff and lots of support for students. So I wanna thank you all. Um, in our PLC meetings, we are continuing our work with NIET. We are deconstructing standards and um, Diving right into rigor, and what is so neat about that is that we are also learning so many new things um, as coaches and admin and teachers, and it just feels so collaborative, um, great vision. Um, our teachers are hard into test prep. Next Tuesday is our first TCAP day, so we are super excited about that. Um, we wanna thank everybody who came to the staff versus WBR ball game. We were raising money for the two students who needed wheelchair accessible vans. And uh, if you didn't get the chance to see Joey play, it was very <laughs> entertaining. Um, it's a nice are, word, I appreciate. It was fun, it was nice. Um, oh, yeah. Through our Capturing Kids Hearts Committee, we've decided that this is a busy time of year. It's the calm before the storm, um, but we decided we wanted to do more things as a staff together. So we are gonna start offering um, events where all the staff can just come, come together and have fun. And tomorrow is our first one. And we're gonna have a staff volleyball game at school after school. If anybody wants to come and play, you're welcome to. Uh, we're looking forward to the art festival on the 22nd. I know Ms. Swanner's worked very hard with her students on that. Uh, May 2nd is our book fair sneak peek and then a third and fourth grade performance. May the 4th is cookout and May the 12th is um, at nine o'clock a senior walk. If you all can come. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to add to that that at the last minute Kona Ice actually came on Monday and um, treated all of the teachers to um, and he Matt, Matt is a really good friend to us yeah. and takes great care so we appreciate him reaching out as well that, that concludes our reports all right we'll move on to the director's report okay I've got quite a few little updates for you today um, the first is going to come with an additional attachment um, <laughs> As you know, each year I give you this same sheet that has our weighted full-time equivalent daily or average daily attendance comparison. And this is where the State Department looks at the average daily attendance. So this is bottoms and seats, not membership, of our first three periods. And we take the highest average of period one, two, and three. And um, there is a pretty comprehensive formula that goes into how they calculate these. So when you look at the numbers, those aren't necessarily numbers of students, because obviously we don't have 1,085 students in Clinton City, but students who participate in certain programs have different weights, and some weights are more than one. So that's why that number is higher than our actual enrollment. But I put last year's comparison to this year, and as you can see, <clears throat> we have increased slightly by 26. While that doesn't seem like a lot, Scott Ray has taught me that there's power in decimal points and you need to carry that to the full decimal point because decimal points mean money. So we will see a slight increase in the number of the divide out that we get out of taxes um, from the county from the three districts. So that is good news for us. What we see 
over the past few years, I've had this chart for several years and it just kind of goes up and down and ebbs and flows. So some years we lose just a little bit, some years we gain just a little bit. So we will, we will take every penny we can get and we will enjoy that gain. What is interesting about this is that even though it is April and we're just getting this, this formula and this estimate is retroactive. So because we have seen this increase, it will be retroactive to the whole school year. So um, Scott looked at it and said that might pay for a nice TA. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that money and be happy. Um, the next is just for your information only, just so that you can begin to see how the TISA formula is gonna play out. In the past, we would get mo monthly BEP estimates, um, and then all the, it's not finalized until July. So BEP allocations were not finalized till July. TISA allocations will not be finalized until July. But this is our latest estimate. It's the March estimate, and on the back, you can see where we talked about each student is going to get a base of $6,860, and then You've got your weights for economically disadvantaged, concentrated poverty. You get to see there that our small school stipend, because we are under 1,000 students, brings us approximately $321,000 extra. Your unique learning needs are all of your special ed and ELL. Um, different uh, groups, and depending on how much services they receive, it depends on how much extra weights they get. And then you see our direct learning. <clears throat> Now you may see that this estimate down here is less than what Scott has actually budgeted. That shouldn't be of a concern to you because number one, the, uh, the outcome fundings is to be determined. So there will be additional money for the number of children that we have on track and mastered and uh, for different very, uh, various things from our TCAP testing. That can't be determined until fall, until our testing comes out. And then historically, this is just, this includes what the state gives us and their required local match. But we always get more local than, than what is required. So that's why Scott's budget is higher than what this is. But I just kind of wanted you to see how they're laying out those estimates. Um, what you will see is that this estimate is not what we're getting from the state. This is total what we have to spend on education in Clinton City. Um, and so this normally is a 70% 70, 70 from the state, 30% from local, but they look at your ability to pay within each county and then they use the TASSER and the CBER, which are two models, and they use 50% TASSER, 50% CBER, and that tells us how much local we have to pay. They are still finalizing those percentages for this year. So here in a few weeks, we should know how much of that is gonna come from the state and how much of it will be local. So we will continue to keep you updated on that. Okay. Um, a couple of other things is, as you know, TCAP testing is beginning. Um, Jamie has been keeping very close tabs on our attendance this year and our attendance is so much better than it has been since uh, 2020. And so we are very, very hopeful that those additional days that students have been in seats participating in instruction is going to pay off well for us. Um, but I always go into TCAP and say, I feel good about it because I know for a fact our teachers and students could not work hard, harder than they have worked this year. Um, it's been a great year. Teachers have done a wonderful job um, meeting the needs of kids this year. Um, we are accepting transfer applications until May 15th. I am proud to report that we, all, uh, we had a period of just zone exception applications prior to the transfer openings and the zone exceptions or any Clinton City student that wants to attend another school. We did have several of those um, turned in and normally that is just because mom and dad work closer to one school or grandparents take to school and it's more convenient for them. It's certainly not a preference of one school programming over another, but we were able to honor all of those zone exceptions for our city residents this year. So those letters have gone out. Um, with third grade retention, <clears throat> as of today, nothing has changed. Um, they have a bill that looks like it's gonna pass that would impact next year, that would just say that if we move from easy CBM to Ames Web, uh, which is the state provided universal screener, then we would be able to allow an additional piece of data to be used. If a student scored 50th percentile, they would not fall under the retention category. They will not allow us, the bill is not allowing us to use EZCBM, even though it is state board approved. And so once this bill passes, we will have to have a conversation if we wanna move away from EZCBM to Ames Web to give our students that additional um, 
safety net, but um, we will be filing an appeal. So right now, the State Department is allowing us, if a student scores a composite ELA score of 40, above 40th percentile, we can submit an appeal, or the parent can submit an appeal to the state. Um, in the state law, uh, the, the bill that is passed, one of the things is in there is before the parent had to do the appeal. If this bill passes, then beginning this year, the parent could request that we appeal on their behalf. So the parent could do a written request and then we would be able to do that appeal on their behalf. There is also an appeal if there's been a catastrophic event. So if something personal has happened in the life of a student, a death in the family, a fire in the house, um, you know, a, a divorce or anything significant, they could, appeal, uh, they could appeal and the State Department would um, consider that. Um, I am proud to report, though, that we did give out 66 initial letters at the beginning of the year. Um, our parents are, they're doing what needs to be done. I mean, we just have such great parents that want to see their kids be successful. So as of today, we have 46 rising fourth graders that have gone ahead and signed up for summer school. And so once they do that summer school, um, then, then they're set on the pathway to move on to fourth grade. Um, the General Assembly did finally fund all three of our learning camps this year. So they are going to be funding rising kindergarten, so our kindergarten boost camp through ninth grade, which for us means through rising seventh grade. Um, this is great news. Um, we were prepared that we would see about a 10% cut in allocations, which we were going to be able to absorb without uh, without messing with the staff and having the same number of staff and the same exact programming that we'd had in the past. However, when the allocations arrived, they cut us $93,000, which is approximately one-third of our budget. And so we do have a meeting with the commissioner next week to express our concerns about that. What we are being told is that wasn't a department um, request, that was a finance, a finance decision. Um, so I don't have any hope that that is going to change, but we will continue to look once we get registration numbers, we will continue to um, provide the programming that the funding will allow. Um, so we're gonna run those from June 5th to June 30th. This year we are adding a transportation component because that summer school is mandatory for rising fourth graders. We felt like we needed to give every student every chance possible of attending. So we've been in conversation with Parker Transport about picking up at Clinton Elementary and South Clinton Elementary each morning and transporting the children to North and then transporting them back to the base school if they need that uh, level of service. Um, Scott has been partnering with Dwayne Wilkerson. As you know, we've been holding our conversations about an updated playground at Clinton Elementary School. We know that where that playground is gonna go is gonna impact some of our parking. So before we really begin that project, we need to make sure that our teachers have a place to park, and so he, Dwayne has willingly um, has willingly said that he would work with Scott, and um, he's going to do the surveys and make sure that we're good with water runoff and all of that good stuff. And he's going to help us oversee that project. So we'll hopefully be seeing things taking place on that soon. I just want to say Dwayne's a really nice fellow. He was a custodian at North for a lot of years. Oh. He's a really good guy. Yeah, I like. I mean, he's always he's always willing to work with us. So, and then two other quick ones before I get to my final one. Um, I did contact you all about the school board meeting in June. Everybody responded and said that they were able to meet on June 15th. So, if it is okay, we'll just do our public notice that that June meeting has been moved to June 15th. I think that actually worked out for Joey because Joey mm -hmm. was going to be gone the next week and wouldn't be able to come. Um, so, if you all are okay with that, we'll do... Uh, We'll put that on the website and go ahead and do our public notice for that. And I do want to say a special thanks to, to Scott Ray. I know I give him a hard time um, sitting up here, but um, he has really had a lot on his plate this month with um, training Sean, with budget, with salaries, with um, federal programs and drawdowns. And he's just, he's really had a lot on his plate and we are just so blessed to have him, and he's so much fun to give a hard time, but he really is a huge benefit to Clinton City Schools, and the fact that he can see the foresight and then do the research, and he can come to me with with legit ideas and, and, and ideas for our finances that are going to secure Clinton City future, I just, I really appreciate his, his ethics and his honesty. Um, and then finally, just, I'm gonna 
piggyback on what Jenna said. This past week has been one of the hardest weeks um, that we have had. Um, we have certainly lost students to health conditions and um, things that we had had time to prepare for. And even though that doesn't make it any easier, at least you walk into it with a plan. This one slapped us hard in the face and I have to commend Jenna and Abby for stepping up and just taking control of the situation and wrapping their arms around um, teachers and students and utilizing community support to do that. Um, we have been in contact with the father. He would like to hold a celebration of life service in our CES gym. We have given him approval to do that on April the 22nd. That will be after we feel, figured out the mosaic would we'll probably be winding down. Um, so we're gonna be receiving a friends from four to six. Uh, PM and then with a short service at six o'clock in the gym. Um, Holly Gamble is going to oversee that, so I'm working closely with Holly about the specifics specifics of that. But um, if you had an opportunity to know Isaac, he certainly was a joy. And just by the way that his grandparents and father have stayed so connected and have visited Clinton City Schools, and every time they do, they say that that was just a changing point in his life and how he thrived under. Um, our staff's um, leadership and love at um, Clinton Elementary. They fought hard, they loved hard, so of course all of this hurts hard. So we will continue to walk that road with those sweet grandparents and the father and do whatever we can to support them. And that concludes my report. Any questions for me? All right. Hearing none, I'll go ahead and declare this meeting adjourned.